the oceans are really important. We rely on them for so many things that people don't really realize. My name is Jade Schiller, and I'm a marine biologist and oceanographer. I've always been really interested in science and curious about nature. And as a kid, I used to always go down to the beach whenever there was a really good low tide and explore and check out whatever critters I could find there. One of the most memorable times was when I ended up with an octopus wrapped around my arm. I learned much later that they can actually bite if they want to, uh, but this one was very relaxed and calm and it hung out for a bit and then swam off. I was so excited and so curious and I just wanted to learn more. And that's really what science is about, is curiosity and asking questions and trying to find the answers to those questions. So I've been interested in marine biology for a really long time. And when I was growing up, the only marine biologist I had ever heard of was Jacques Cousteau. And when I got to university, I learned about Kathleen's work, Dr. Kathleen Conlon, and she's doing this amazing field work, diving under the ice. And I thought it was just so cool that there were women out there on the cutting edge of this field, getting to have as much fun as the guys. I really admire the work that she does. Hi, my name is Kathy Conlon. I'm a research scientist at the Canadian Museum of Nature and I specialize in marine ecology and systematics, which is the naming and classifying of animals. Kathleen was born in Ottawa, Ontario in 1950. She began her studies at the University of Victoria in 1977. And by the time she finished her PhD from Carleton University, she was married and had two small children. She had the opportunity to study sea otters in Alaska with a research team from California. And shortly after that, she was diving under the ice in the Arctic and Antarctic. It totally surprised me the first time that I went to the Antarctic that, that there was such a diversity of life that could live in such cold water. There would be all sorts of little sea angels and a lot of jellyfish at times. You could see the red starfish. You could see the seals, Waddell seals. They weren't really all that aggressive. And then you could also look up and under the ice and there were all these crystals that would be growing on the underside of the ice. I really like the outgoing and adventurous aspect of Kathleen's work. Not only is she going to these extreme locations and diving under these really challenging conditions, but she's also making these amazing discoveries. She's made these keys, these legends that people all over the world use to identify these different arthropods that she studies. Before her work, everyone assumed that they were a single species, and now she's shown that there are a couple dozen species, and everyone looks to her work to figure out which is which. The work that I'm doing now is studying bacteria in the oceans. And the ship that we go out on is a Canadian Coast Guard vessel called the John P. Tully. We leave from Sydney on Vancouver Island and head straight west out into the middle of the Pacific. The whole trip takes about two and a half weeks. Essentially what we're trying to do is understand what's going on in the ocean. And the main piece of equipment we use to do that is called a rosette. It allows us to take samples of the water at different depths and we're able to send the rosette down to about 10 meters off the bottom and the deepest sample I collect is about 4.2 kilometers down, which is deeper than where the Titanic is resting. Once the rosette comes back up on deck, we collect the cells out of the water and preserve them. And then when we're back on land, we can actually extract the DNA from the cells and sequence the DNA. And that gives us uh, the ability to understand what the cells are doing, and what the conditions are that they're living under. And when we couple that with the other measurements that we take, it actually gives us a really nice, complete picture of what's going on in the oceans. One of the things that is going on is that oxygen levels are lower than when we began studying this area 60 years ago. 
to help understand why I like to use the beer analogy. If you have a really cold beer, it stays fizzy for longer because those dissolved gases stay in the liquid. But as you warm the beer up, it goes flat faster. So a liquid that's cold can hold more dissolved gases than a liquid that's warm. So as the oceans are warming, the oxygen levels are lower because the warmer water is less able to hold those dissolved gases. So that might mean it's a lot harder for us to breathe here on land. I think we need to really push politicians and legislators to start making big policy changes to help reverse climate change and make sure that our oceans and our lives are healthy in the future. I'm pretty sure that if someone tells you they don't get seasick, they just haven't been in rough enough weather yet. Mm -hmm.